This video, we explore glaucoma and how the autonomic nervous system can be used to treat it. First, let's look at some anatomy. So here's the eye. You have the cornea, which is the outer part of the eye. You know, it's, it's convex. It refracts a lot of the light towards the fovea centralis at the back of the retina. And then you have the lens here that between the two of those, those really do the focusing and refraction. And then you have the iris. This is the color part of the eye. So this person has green eyes. And then you have the ciliary body. Within the ciliary body, you have the smooth muscle called the ciliary muscle. And when it contracts, it brings the edges of the eye together and puts that suspensory ligament on a slack. That will cause the lens to accommodate and round out for like near vision. Um, other than that, we have these little canals over here. This angle right here is called the iridocorneal angle because the irido comes from the iris, corneo from the cornea, and together they form that angle. And right there we have the canal of Schlem. So that's where a lot of the aqueous humor will flow. So with glaucoma, you have open angle glaucoma and closed angle glaucoma. Uh, closed angle glaucoma is a medical emergency. It really builds up pressure fast. And um, whereas open angle can be a, a slower onset and more of a chronic thing. Either way, you know, the back of the eye will be up here. So you have your aqueous humor that's water-like through here. And then you have your vitreous humor kind of in the ball part of the eye. And whenever this aqueous humor pressure builds up, it pushes back into that vitreous humor. And at the very back of the eye, which would be way up here, you have the optic nerve. And this is this calls a degenerative optic nerve neuropathy. So it, it can cause blindness by damaging the optic nerve. So uh, glaucoma is this increased intraocular pressure with the aqueous humor. Um, the aqueous humor is actually made from the ciliary body. So I've kind of outlined this pretty thick because it's actually the epithelium the surface of the ciliary body that acts like a gland. And so a lot of times when you have a, a secretion, the watery part of the secretion comes from the pl plasma out of the blood. And then the gland just kind of modifies it to meet the needs of that secretion. So over here we have a capillary and it obviously blood flows through the capillary and plasma will, will through, you know, filtration will filtrate into that ciliary epithelium and then that ciliary epithelium will mod modify that and then you can see the flow kind of goes from back here behind the iris through the pupil this opening's the pupil right here and then it'll kind of circulate back into that canal of schlem so uh, this is important for all this so i um, kind of drew it on both sides here this red this is called the trabecular meshwork and for that fluid, that aqueous humor to flow into the canal of Schlem, it's got to get through that trabecular meshwork. And this is the problem with open angle glaucoma a lot of times is this meshwork isn't very, very penetrable and some of this fluid gets backed up. You know when you're at the optometrist, a lot of times before you go see them, they'll kind of do that thing where it tickles your eyelashes. They're looking for your intraocular pressure there and it should be between 10 and 21 milligrams per uh, millimeters mercury pressure but if it's higher than that then you know you've got to decrease that pressure so it doesn't damage the optic nerve and cause blindness so um, here's what we're gonna do there's there's other types of treatment a lot of these are like eye drops so you so it's kind of isolated to the eye you know you can use a prostaglandin analog that's a first line of defense another first line is timolol so remember with the suffix LOL, that's a beta blocker. So Timolol is eye drops, you drop them in, and beta-1 receptors are on the ciliary body. And when they get stimulated by norepinephrine, so here's a, a, um, a norepinephrine being released from this sympathetic neuron. It's gonna bind to that beta-1 blocker. That's gonna stimulate more um, production of aqueous humor. So if you can block the production of aqueous humor by blocking the beta-1 blocker where norepinephrine can't bind to it, 
you're going to decrease the intraocular pressure and that's how beta blockers work in glau glaucoma let's go to another pilocarpine this one's pretty common for uh, glaucoma and it's a muscarinic agonist <clears throat> let's think about this muscarinic that means that the parasympathetic nervous system those are the receptors for the autonomic ver uh, parasympathetic nervous system and if it's going to if it's agonist it's going to promote p the parasympathetic activity so if we have muscarinic receptors um, and they bind to pilocarpine what it's going to do is it's going to um, cause the ciliary muscle within the ciliary body to contract so imagine the, the ciliary muscle in here with muscarinic receptors it binds to acetylcholine or pilocarpine causes contraction when this contracts this will kind of also contract the the iris a little bit and when you do this it kind of opens this angle even more and you get some channels in that trabecular meshwork that open up as well as the canal of Schlem opens up a little bit wider so you can get a little bit better drainage with those muscarinic agonists such as pilocarpine and then alpha 2 agonists so you have to remember with alpha 2 adrenergic receptors when you um, those actually are anti-sympathetic so here's how they work so let's imagine um, right here on the uh, terminal part of this sympathetic neuron this postganglionic sympathetic neuron it releases norepinephrine and norepinephrine will come back and bind to alpha 2 receptors and that's a negative feedback it prevents further norepinephrine from being released from that sympathetic neuron so if you take an alpha 2 agonist such as apraclonidine it will block the release of norepinephrine so if you have less norepinephrine released you have no, less norepinephrine binding to the beta 1 receptor and you don't produce as much aqueous humor so it's just an indirect way of blocking the production whereas beta 1 is more of a direct way and then alpha 1 agonist if, so alpha-1 adrenergic receptors on the blood vessels, when they bind to norepinephrine or epinephrine, they will constrict. And when, you can, when it constricts, it's not going to release as much fluid into that ciliary body. So you're not going to have as much secretory fluid coming in, and therefore you're not going to make as much secretory fluid coming out, which is aqueous humor. So you can see four different ways that autonomic pharmacology comes into the treatment of glaucoma.